Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be playing some Food Chain Magnate as the Golden Duck Diner. I hope you enjoy the video. So the first thing you do is you generate a bank of 50 bucks per person. And once that's drained, you add up all the numbers on these reserve cards that the players throw in to create a new bank. And when that one is emptied, the game's over, or at least it's the last round. So the... The players kind of determine how long it's going to take. And in this case, I'm going to throw in 300. I really just enjoy the engine building part of this game. So I'm not looking to do a very fast game. So looking over here at the board, my friend has already placed his location, which is really in the best spot. I mean, you have the three houses there, one of which is within a range of zero. Another one, which is in a range of one. If he gets a drive through, it would bring it down to zero. And then finally, you have this last one, which is also within a range of one. Now, I really like placing up here because that'll give me access to two houses that aren't too available to him. We have this one, which would be in a range of zero. And then we would have this one, which is in a range of one. So as I sit here and fiddle trying to place this restaurant down, um, I also... Briefly considered trying to, you know, start next to him and do like some price competition to make the game a little more entertaining. But I noticed that there's a bridge in order to get to my area, which I'm highlighting on screen here. So in order for him to get to where I need to go, it would end up being one, two, three, four spaces for him to get to one of my houses. So I'm kind of banking on the fact that the third player is going to place somewhere in between us and mutually compete or lean more towards his direction because he's more house rich. So I feel a little bad here because the last person to place is the least experienced, I believe, amongst us. I offered to switch positions with him just to make the game a little more fun. Um, but he's good with where he is and it's not too bad of a spot. I did consider going up into the corner to corner the market. And it, that can be really good to have no competition. You can get a luxury manager out, but there's really no area up there to put mailboxes or billboards or gardens that would impact that house. And someone else could just put a restaurant and kind of cancel that strategy going into kind of the later stages of the game. So my initial thought here is to put a garden here because everyone's so far away and then Maybe a garden here as well. And I'm hoping I can outcompete with them by dropping some early marketing, getting that kind of early income going by selling some goods. Fingers crossed. So I'm going to end up going with recruiting girl here. My friend's going to end up going with trainer. And actually, this cover is pretty much the two opening moves in this game. 90% of the time, I would go with recruiting girl. And 10% of the time, I would end up going with trainer. Maybe even less than that. So for the first turn, surprise, surprise, I throw down my recruiting girl. So for turn order here, since we all have two open slots available in our management chain, we just choose it by previous turn order. I'm going to go last. The reason being is because this is a very reactionary game. You want to see what milestones other players are going for so you can get them during the same turn. Because these milestones are what will make or break you in this game. So going around and coming back to my turn, I don't see them take anything that's super alarming to me as, oh, I need to jump on this right now or I'm going to miss out. I think this is where getting recruiting girl is so important because I effectively get to get a recruiting girl and one other person, which means I basically get two turns and that just creates exponential growth throughout the game. So I'm going to get a marketing trainer. I do this because I want to get some marketing going in the areas near me because I'm going to need the money. And I also want to prevent them from being able to market to the two houses right next to them. And if I can, by chance, snag the two billboards that will fit there, it'll work out great for me. So I end up losing out on the milestone first to train someone because someone started with a turn one trainer. This means that I have to prioritize getting some money going in order to get those higher level cards. Thankfully, we have our marketer ready to go. So going into round three, I'm restructuring, I fill up all my slots. The person who got the trainer ends up having a slot open and he ends up choosing to go last, which makes perfect sense. You get to see what other people's milestones they're going for. 
and grab onto them if they're something important to you. All right, my turn. So I'm gonna reveal my people. And first up, I'm gonna play Marketing Trainee. This will give me the milestone for infinite advertising, which is a double-edged sword sometimes. And it'll prevent them from getting one of the two billboards they need to market to both those houses. Uh, let me just drop it up here. And I think I wanna be first to market the drinks. So I'm gonna put a red one down there. And when you do that, that means I get plus five for any drink sold, which if you're seeing there's three drinks and then there's the pizza and the burgers. So I think that is the best one to market first. So in order to fill that demand, I'm gonna grab an errand boy and this also doubles to get me the refrigerator because I saw someone else grab something that produces food as well. A little preemptive, but I'm gonna be the first to train three people, so that gets me two free management trainees. <sighs> this is why this strategy is so good. So next up, I'm gonna grab a trainer. I'm really just hoping I can make a sale here, otherwise I'm gonna use that trainer to train someone and then turn around and have no money to pay them and immediately fire them, which would be embarrassing. But don't worry, unlike this game, whether I make a sale or not, if you subscribe to this channel, I will not fire you, I promise. So following up on our previous strategy, I'm gonna grab another marketing trainee. This is gonna put out that other billboard that they need in order to market to both of their homes. Shh, don't let them know. All right, let's go ahead and pick up our cards. Um, I do forget to market the one soda up on the top there. I fixed that a little bit later. Going into round four, I'm gonna play my two management trainees. I'm just gonna do it face up because it's obvious what they are. And then I have exactly enough slots in order to play the rest of my cards. So I end up being forced to go first here. The only reason you would really wanna do that is if you wanted to tie break on sales. It's like third on the list of tie breakers. All right, so for my turn, I'm gonna do the marketing trainee. And I know I wanna get rid of that two slot, but I also want to take this three and close out slots around my buildings. The concern being, I don't want them to drop marketing themselves over there. And somehow I can't make a sale, which then ripples into, I can't pay my employees. And then I have to ditch some of my really good salaried employees. With that said, I'm actually gonna go ahead and get first to market burgers. So I go ahead and grab my new business developer in order to put out some gardens. I really hope I can do so before some of the spaces get closed off. I'm gonna grab another management trainee. That way I'll have uh, some extra slots to work with next round. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a kitchen trainee. They're not quite as efficient, but they're really flexible and it'll allow me to meet the demand of the burger next round. Ugh. So I realized I make a mistake here and I accidentally hire an extra trainer. I shouldn't have done that. I'm really sorry. I think in my head I got mixed up and I thought the trainer got the new business developer. So so one of my friends gets first waitress played. Uh, I'm kind of hesitant because I think I might actually underestimate them. What do you guys think about the waitress card down in the comments? I know there's like a go entirely waitress strategy, but that's more of like a joke strategy, I think. And I lose out on first pizza produced. Not a big deal. On the bright side, about this time, I do remember that I played the Aaron Bowie first, so win. Ooh, yes, time to make a sale. So I'm gonna do my first official sale of the game. I'm gonna sell a soda, and because I have the milestone, I get an extra five bucks for it, making $15 in profit. So at the end of each round, you have to toss out any food or drink that you have left over, it goes stale. Fortunately, in this case, if you're the first to do it, you get probably one of the best milestones in the game, which is the refrigerator, because you don't want to be wasteful. And now for the worst part of the round. Everything with a little dollar sign icon on the bottom right, you have to end up paying five bucks for at the end of the round. And I have absolutely no idea what my friends are doing right now. All I hear is a bunch of jiggling. Is that a runaway bull? So going into round five, I only have slots for six people. So I'm gonna be down one. So new business developer for sure. 
I'm going to have to end up playing the kitchen trainee and the errand boy in an order to meet demand. And then in order to meet the requirements for first to pay 20 salary, I really want to get that. I'm going to put out both my trainers and I'm going to have to sideline one of my recruiting girls. I really need more of a management chain right now. <laughs> I, I think this may be the only time in my life where I look at management and go, wow, we really need more of those. Uh, with that said, I end up getting stuck with second going into this next round, which is unfortunate. Uh-oh. So this is really bad. He ends up picking up the guy who can create the radio, put him up on screen. This basically just broadcasts to the entire board that demand increases. So I'm really hoping to leverage my fridge and to start getting more production going to compete with that. Like, that is a game-changing card. Woo! Time to flip my cards. I get one burger. And that gets me first burger produced. So I get a burger cook. My errand boy is going to go collect two soda. My new business developer is going to add a garden to a house. I'm actually, I'm debating. If I do this, I'll close this off, but it's a little bit closer to them. Um, it would be pretty close to him if, I, if he got a drive through Actually, yeah, I think it's safer to do this. So I place a garden there, and then I'm going to... I have two trainers and two recruitments. Um, I'm going to get one junior vice. And let me get, yeah, I'll get a second one. Oh, so that two by two billboard ends up getting created. Um, Kind of wish I would have stole that from him somehow, but I didn't really know where to put it. And it looks like we're going to put pizza there, which is unfortunate because I'm not, uh, I don't have pizza. So we move into sales time and I realized that we forgot to do my marketing up at the top there. Um, <laughs> this video is turning out to be a mess. I sell a uh, soda. For 15. And then I sell the burger for 10 times 2 plus 5, which equals Money Machine Go Burger. This is awesome. This is great progress. I'm really keeping an eye on the first to 100. That's Probably the best achievement. I think I said that about the fridge earlier. Forget about that. The best achievement is the first to 100. But then I have to pay 20 bucks in salaries, uh, which really makes me understand how my employer feels. On the bright side, I get first to pay 20 more in salaries, which lets you use multiple trainers. So you can just go from like the lowest tier all the way up to executive president or whatever in one turn. Let me go ahead and make sure that I remember to actually mark it this time. Oh, this is starting to get excessive. I'm gonna need a better way of managing this. Restructuring. So obvious choices first, we get the burger cook out to meet demand there and we get an errand boy out to, we don't actually need demand there. Um, but it will allow us flex depending on what gets marketed this round and put it in our fridge for later. So I'm thinking I may be able to get away with not doing a kitchen training this round. Although I may want to go ahead and start getting some pizzas or an ability to get some pizzas. So if we do a management training over here. 
We definitely want to play both of these trainers. And then I could get away with, yeah, I think it's best if I do Junior Vice and go all in on getting more trainers. And I could train up to another Vice this round too. So choosing turn order and one of the player chooses to go first, which is odd. I go last. Oh, so this is a little dangerous. So a radio is going out and I also lose first cart operator. So this is where I'm going to have to lean on getting a pizza cook to keep up with demand or getting a ton of errand boys in order to keep up with demand on that and then go real tall on our management chain. Okay, so we get yellow and green. Okay, yeah, this is fine. We should have enough to recruit Aaron boys and keep up with demand on that. This, this, this is going to be okay. So something I missed earlier is I did get first to 20 bucks. So I get to take a look at the reserve cards, which will create the second bank to kind of see how long the game's going to be. And we have a total of $700. So that's a pretty decent length game. So no rush, no rush. So we're coming around to my turn. Time for the big reveal. All right, so I really don't like doing this, but with the radio coming out, I'm not entirely confident that our Aaron boys can take, can keep up with demand here. So I'm gonna get a truck driver. The reason I hate doing this is because I think it's really gonna slow down our training engine. I would have really liked to get maybe some more management trainees. So my new business developer is gonna put out a garden and I don't see a reason to do this in one location or the other. I'm gonna put it over here just because that feels a little closer to me. It makes me feel a little safer. So the burger cook's gonna produce three burgers. My kitchen trainee is gonna produce um, another burger. Actually, let's do a pizza. Maybe I'll luck out and get demand when no one else can. My errand boy, what is my errand boy gonna do? So we've used him, we've used him, we've used her. My errand boy is gonna grab two green. And that leaves us with two trainees. And then I'm gonna recruit one more trainer and see the problem is when I collect from here, it's going to get me, it's not going to get me quite enough to fulfill demand for the green. I'm going to get another errand boy as well. So this, this is really going to slow down my engine, but I think it's going to bring in massive profits. Because of the garden here, I end up selling this burger for 10, double that to 20, plus the bonus five, so $25. I also really don't understand why this game doesn't have a $20 bill. So I end up losing out on both pizza sales. Selling a soda. We end up selling this soda for 25 bucks as well. Overall, I mean, 50 bucks in a round this early, that's pretty solid. Now, granted, we have significantly more overhead than the other players because one of them has the $15 discount on salary. So, mm. doing some quick math here, that's 80 bucks. That's really close to the $100 we need for the milestone. One, two, three, four, five. Five people have to pay, so 25 bucks. Uh, overhead. So just going through here and doing advertising for the round. Zoom, zoom. Uh, my truck driver should be able to pick up two red and two yellow. I think that's the most efficient route. So 
So the two red and the two yellow should be able to fulfill these requirements pretty well. Oh, there should be another red. Oh no, it's just on the garden. There we go. So I should be looking pretty good. I just need, actually I have the two green. So yeah, I really just need the truck driver to go out and I'll be good. I could drop another house. There's really no good place to put it. I could put it over here, but there's nothing marketing to it right now. Ooh, I'm actually tempted to, cause I have this, so I just need yellow and red, which I have the errand boys for. I'm tempted to sideline this and try to get a recruiter just to fulfill the yellow. Okay, hold on. First things first, we definitely want all three trainers out. Let's keep this guy. Let's do a, yeah, let's do that. Let's just throw out some errand boys. And then that leaves me with two slots. I could use a burger cook on to recruiting girl. I think it's good to keep getting those trainers for now. And yeah, let's go ahead and do this. So now that we've transitioned more into the mid game, we're not kind of in this frenzy to grab milestones. There's only three available and of them, I would say one is really fantastic and the others are just meh. Okay, so I'm gonna take this truck driver and I'm gonna use a trainer to upgrade him to a Zeppelin pilot. My burger cook's gonna produce three burgers. She's fantastic. Um, I got three for the burger cook. Aaron boy is going to get two yellow and then the other Aaron boy is gonna get two red. Then I'm going to get a vice president. And my recruiting girl is then going to get, um, let's see, one trainer. We'll do two trainers. And that's my turn. Uh-oh. So the first to lower prices gets played. That's one of the milestones. Uh, this basically means we're starting to get into pricing wars. And I think with that, my strategy is gonna to change to spamming out houses, spamming out marketing, and hoping the other players can't keep up with my production, especially the one that lowered prices because he doesn't have a fridge. Uh-oh, so he's getting a discount manager now as well. This is the same person who got the milestone to reduce prices. I'm definitely gonna get some competition up here. Ooh, sales time. Let's make some money. So I sell the house up here and I do pretty well for myself. They're 25 bucks each. So a total of 75. And with that, I will get the first to have a hundred dollars. So my CEO counts as a CFO. Oh, and we also break the bank because it's I'm 10 short. So we replenish it with 700 bucks. And because the most common reserve card is the 300, our CEO ends up getting an extra slot. So I end up losing a sale to the South because this player is playing the kind of discount game, doesn't really make too much from it. So it's okay. The marketing campaign for the billboard here ends up canceling out and the blue player picks up a sale of a pizza. And the green player ends up picking up another sale in the South. Again, not too much of a profit, a little bit of a discount going on there. I managed to pull off my second sale in the North area. That gets me another $75, doing really well at this point. So for salaries, I have one, two, three, Four, five, six. So I have to pay 30 bucks. This is getting ridiculous. So we do marketing and something I'm realizing at this point is that there's not nearly as much demand for things as I'm really hoping for. 
<sighs> My hands starting to get so large. It'll only pop up when I scroll over it. Oh boy. All right. I have too many management trainees. Let's get this vice president out there. We have an extra slot this round too, which is good. So in order to keep up with demand, we're definitely going to want to get this Zeppelin pilot going. He should be able to get two drinks from each source on route, ignoring roads. So one, two, three, four. That would get me a lot. I'm worried one of them is going to transition over to producing pizza, but that's okay. I definitely want all of my trainers out. Every single one of them. It leaves us two slots there, three slots there. You know, we don't actually need to put that down this turn because we're not going to mark it until next turn. Um, so that leaves us with, we can just stockpile. And recruit some more basic trainers. The other thing I could do is keep one of my juniors and that would save me a trainer. Replace them with a So I'd want to have five, one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Yeah. Let me, um, keep one of these and replace them with a marketing manager. Three, four, four, five. Yeah. Perfect. Perfecto. The only thing that misses us is the only thing that misses me out on is the pizza cook, but I'll go ahead and use the kitchen training. And I end up getting stuck with last pick and therefore second place. Ooh, pizza chef just got taken. Um, that's okay. I think we can stockpile some in our fridge and rotate. Okay, so my Zeppelin pilot is going to get two drinks from each source on route, plus one because I was first to get Aaron Boy. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. So that should get me three green, three yellow. Three red, three yellow, three red, three green, three red. Okay, so this is a obscene amount of resources to sell. I, I had to double check this. I'm pretty sure I'm playing it right. Someone correct me because this just feels like ridiculous. I think I broke it. Then my burger cook produces three and... I, at this, at this point, I don't even know why I played those Aaron boys. I guess I thought I needed more. I'm going to produce one pizza. I'll use three of my trainers to get my junior vice up to an executive. And then I'll use my other three trainers and a recruit to get a brand manager. Really trying to get more consumption down. And my last recruiting girl, she will grab a trainer actually one second um nah, i'll get a kitchen trainee taking a look at the other player that is competing with me from a price perspective uh, i really don't want to get into a big price war my plan here is i'm hoping that he's not going to have the production if i just spam out new houses and i just spam out new marketing campaigns so that's going to be my strategy going forward. I can probably push house here and a house here. And then that'll help me just, hey, I can outproduce you. And yeah, you're going to sell stuff too. But 
you can't keep up with the production that I have. Excellent. So another house gets placed alongside of a billboard and it works out really well for me because I really need more demand so that the person trying to undercut me in price just can't keep up with it all. Yeah. So I got that taken from me because he discounted. So yeah, let's get that strategy going of just mask board. So the green player gets another demand fulfilled. He's not making much for each sale, but it's more than I'm making from that sale, which is zero. Surprisingly, I somehow fulfilled the demand for that because none of the other players have a green and yellow. So that gets me uh, 30 bucks. Plus I have a CEO, so 45. I mean a CFO. All right, so then we're gonna fulfill this one. Um, so this is, so these are doubled. So 25, 25, 25 would be 75 plus 50% is um, hurting my head. Uh, it's, it would be 112. Yes, flood demand for those sugary drinks. Flood it. Bye bye massive amounts of food. Does the expansion have like a recycling center? So payday one, two, three, four, five, six, 30 bucks. This is going to be a crazy turn. Let's get that executive vice president out there. All right. So we definitely want this new business developer. Let's get the brand manager. Yeah. Let's get this Zeppelin going. Let's get the burger cook. I want to try to compete a little bit with the pizza. Wow, this thing has 10 slots. Man, who said executives are worthless? I'm just going to stack them. <laughs> like, there's no reason to play our errand boys because we're going to get enough from, from our Zeppelin pilot to cover anything and everything that comes our way. I could pull back on the junior vice president here. That way I could train him up for, yeah, we can even hold on to this guy. This is crazy. I have, um, two slots open. So I actually choose to go first here because it's come down to turn order for sales a couple times. Okay. So I'm going to flip over five trainers, <laughs> two recruiting girls. Placing a new house. So I'm going to put this house up here. I really just want to spam demand of everything. Then put a restaurant in this corner here. I'm going to use my brand manager. I'm hoping this is going to put out a really solid amount of soda and help me get some money. So we got airplanes. Um, so I have five trainers. So I'm going to take this vice president. And I'm going to train him up to be a regional manager. So that would be one of the um, trainers. This junior vice president, I'm going to train up three times to become an HR director. I'm getting tired of paying people. Anyone else find it funny that the HR director makes it so you pay people less? And then I will use my last trainer to get a campaign manager. That also takes one of my recruiting girls and my other two recruiting girls. And well, my other recruiting girl and my CEO is going to get two trainers. Never by me just picking up an insane number of resources. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. Huh? I also just remembered I got the first airplane three for the burgers and these kitchen fellows, uh, let's get pizza. So I'm really worried I'm about to get pizza bombed. We also get another house played, but there's really nothing that I'm seeing that will market to it this round. So I, I get my sale robbed from me again. Woe is me. Woe is me. Green player picking up another sale here with the discounts. Wow, somehow I picked this one up. 
Um, so that's a, so what is that? That's 15 to 15 is 30 plus my CEO bonus. That is 45. And this gets me my healthy 75. I need to spam on marketing. So Green really just raked it in the sales this round. The downfall is that he's selling each thing for five bucks a pop, and I don't think he has any of the bonus milestones available, so he's not making too much profit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pay on back. 30 bucks. So dropping out the marketing resources here. <laughs> My giant stack of trainers. Um, we definitely want this Zeppelin pilot. We for sure want to get this campaign manager going. Definitely need the regional manager. Definitely want this business developer. HR director here should save me 20 bucks. And a burger cook. Two recruiting girls. And then that leaves me one spot open. Try and get this a pizza out. I kind of like to get some more pizza production because this might bite me. No, I should be good. Especially if I get some pizza cooks this round. Should be fine. I'm kind of debating at this point if there's even going to be another round. I've been picking up 75 from here. This would get me more... Um, we can hit the board over here. That's 120, 220, a little bit. Yeah, I think there's going to be one more round after this. So I think it's interesting how the dynamic of this game in the turn order flips as you get toward the end. You want to go last in the beginning because you want to react to the milestones. And then you want to go first at the end because you want it for tiebreakers. <laughs> oh, so there goes that strategy about producing. Uh, I'm going to skip my Zeppelin for now. I'm going to use my um, new business developer to place a house or garden. I'm going to use my regional manager to place a new restaurant, which opens immediately. HR manager just lets me save some money. I need to gather resources. Let me recruit stuff. So I don't think it's going to go another turn after this, but I do think getting some pizza cooks would be useful. So I'm going to get at least one pizza cook. And then what to do to do with all my, my other ones. Oh, I'm going to use my campaign manager to put out a mailbox. And this is going to try to take, let's say, let's go with soda. Just going through and picking up some pizza and burger folks. That way I have enough resources going into the next round. Picking up another camp. Well, I really don't. See, I really don't think it's going to go another round. So that'd be silly to do. Yeah, I guess I'll pick up our, I guess I'll pick up a recruiting manager and that maybe that'll be useful. And then the other trainers are kind of just useless to me. So then we get three for the burgers. The Zeppelin, oh my gosh, this Zeppelin's just insane. So much, so much production. Oh. And then kitchen trainee, oh. grab a pizza. People are starving and I'm just sitting here with this, with this mess. Oh, so I just realized that if I, oh no, it'd work out. I'd save five bucks, gotta pay her five now and save five bucks next round. So I lose this one again to green just through pricing wars and he's picking up a pretty penny here. I mean, that's, you know, five each times two.
<laughs> so I sell one soda here, uh, which, you know, that's me pretty well. I get the CEO bonus, so a decent amount of money. But if you look closely, it's I actually grabbed the money right out of the blue player's hand. <laughs> so I'm just going to go through a uh, really quick overview of what sales happen just by circling. Pretty much all of them go to green except for one sale of soda in the top left there. Really the only advantage that I have at this point is my sales actually make way more money um, because the gardens up at the top double it. I sell at 10 unit price, you double that, that's 20. He's selling at five, you double that, that's 10. So while I get sniffly fewer sales, the money that I do get is way higher, but I do think that if this goes on much longer, I'm definitely losing this. Okay, so this turn when we do marketing, there's way more stuff coming out. So I'm feeling a lot better about potentially being able to make a sale here and make a little bit more money. Um, also pizza plane. 95 yeah we're for sure not having another turn so i'm just gonna go through and trim the fat of any employees that aren't going to be useful going into next round just so i don't have to pay them and save a couple of dollars so the regional manager is definitely out like there's no point of putting another restaurant down at this point he goes back i'm not paying for him I've had burgers in the fridge for like most of the game but i don't really need burgers so i'm gonna throw the burger chef back so I still do need to produce some pizzas. I should be able to snag some stuff away, assuming he can't get too much production of the sodas. Um, so this one I'd have to pay for. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'd actually go ahead and get rid of this, this cook too. Okay, so I don't think I'm gonna need both. I don't, actually, I, because of these on the board, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I don't need either of these. Two, three, four. Uh, I don't even need this. Let's go ahead and keep those to the side because they're not going to matter too much so pretty sure this is going to be the last round um i ended up firing so many people that this recruiting manager is not going to matter so i'm just down five bucks so obviously going into the last round i jump with a chance to go first with my 10 open slots oh man that executive vice president is just ridiculous uh, the reason I do that is just for tiebreakers on sales. I'm hoping to snag at least a couple going into the last round. So the last rounds are pretty typical. I have a HR person and recruiting manager, so I really pay no salaries, which is pretty cool. I go through and collect a ton of resources just to hopefully make a couple of sales to finish out things because there's no way there's another round. Um, if you've made it this far in the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Food Chain Magnate is kind of one of those niche games, so I really was kind of apprehensive to make this video because I didn't know how many people would be interested in it. Um, there's definitely a couple other ones that I like, like Arkwright, which would be really fun to do, and I'd really enjoy playing that. Um, but so many people like haven't heard of it, so I don't know. The other funny thing is going into this round, I also get a waitress, which begs the question, who was serving people the rest of the time during this game? <laughs> I also think I need to give a little more respect to waitresses in this game because there's been so many cases in this game in particular where we've had ties and the tiebreaker has been turn order, but waitresses supersede that, so I should think I should play with them more. 
So Green ends up getting the house up there through price discounts. Um, I think negative five this round. So not a ton of money is made in profit, but it is taking it from me and something is better than nothing. So good job. I end up getting this sale here of the two soda, thankfully, due to my restaurant that is so close to it that even his deeply discounted prices can't compete. And going forward, I wonder if it'd be a good idea for me to get more restaurants out like this because having a restaurant so close is a pretty big benefit. Ha, nice. Another victory for the little restaurant that could. Another sale for Green. Again, pretty low prices here. I think he's getting five for each item there. And there's no garden, so I'm not making too much. Now this is a pretty nice sale. Even though it's five bucks, you multiply that by two. And I believe he has a CFO at this point. So he's getting the same benefit as me, where you kind of get plus 50%. This one and the sale after this are both gonna go to green again, just mopping the floor with sales this round. Excellent, back to my home turf. My really loyal fan base over there makes a sale to me, even though they could go oh, quite a bit farther actually to get a 50% discount. I think in this game, they, they've they probably given me the most money out of everything. Like they're where most of my money came from. And one last sale for me in the corner here. Uh, my ever loyal soda sale, which I actually make quite a bit off of. So in my experience, food chain magnate's a little weird where the scoring is significantly different between players, especially if you're new. This game is just going to be one of those like, I'm going to play this knowing full well I'm going to do horrible on my first game and I'm just going to learn the process of things. And I think the reason that is is because like here, Green started overtaking me in sales because he was competing in prices. So... I was being significantly cut into. Now, granted, my sales were significantly higher and I started a, a lot sooner, but if this would have went on another couple of rounds, I think I would have had trouble catching up to that price competition uh, without a pretty decent pivot. The end of game scoring ended up being myself at 697 and Green ended up getting 360, um, which is pretty good considering they've they both have played this a lot less than me. And the blue player who I think has only played this once before ended up with a score of 55. We kind of collectively agreed that we really want to play this again with it fresh in our minds because it's such a complicated game, I suppose would be the right word. But I still really enjoy it, especially if you're into Euro builders, like Euro engine builders. With that said, please leave me some feedback. Let me know like if there's something I can convey better. I try to keep the video short relative to the playtime. This one ended up taking, I think the actual playtime was about five hours and I've cut it down to, I, I, it should be under an hour. But if there's something I'm cutting out too much of, let me know, um, am I showing things or not showing things that you guys want to see, stuff like that. Also leave a like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. And it really helps motivate me to create additional content and also know what it is that people want to see. Like, is this too niche? I mean, if, if I don't get too many likes, no one subscribes to it. It kind of signals to me that it's, it's just not too popular of a game. So I should focus on things that maybe reaches a broader audience. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.